Now, from the OWD, what we have understood is if I set the OWD to private, only the record owners can see those records. And even though the tech manager is not able to see the records owned by the two people working for him. So now how to extend that access? If you remember a second requirement, which goes like this, service request record should be visible to the top management. So if you see here, we have a tech manager. Under the tech manager, we have two people working, which is nothing but technician Sam and technician Jack. Now, what we want is these people own two records each, and this manager owns one record from the OWD. As of now, these people own one record, technician manager owns one record, technician Sam owns two, technician Jack owns two. Now, what we want is we wanted to share these records to this manager. These two records from Sam, two records from Jack should be visible to the manager. If you ask me why it needs to be visible, the job of the manager is to make sure that the work is in place and everything is working as expected. If the manager doesn't have the visibility to the requests that are being sent to the technicians from the customers, he'll not be able to properly act on it if there is a need for it. So that is why this tech manager should be able to see those records. So how can we do that? With the help of our role hierarchy. What exactly is this role hierarchy is all about? Role hierarchy automatically grants the access to the records for the users above the record owner in the hierarchy. What exactly it talks about is if I have a people working under another role, so whatever the records that are being owned by these people will be automatically shared with this people above their role. If I put them as in role one and this one as role two, so if role two is above role one, people working under this role will be able to share those records with this people above their role. So in short, the manager can see the records owned by this employees or the technician engineers that we have. Right. So that is our role hierarchy. The beauty of the role hierarchy is configuration of our role hierarchy is very simple. So let's see the organization structure first, and then we'll define our role hierarchy in Salesforce. So this ABC company has this structure. They have the CEO at the top, followed by the director, and to the direct two roles that are reporting. One role is the tech manager, and one other role is finance manager. In this tech manager, there would be multiple people under that role, right? So there could be one or more people under this role. Same goes with your finance manager also. Under this tech manager, we have another role, which is nothing but technician engineer. So there would be multiple people working under that particular role. So all the people would be assigned to this role. And this the technician manager is the next person that they'll be reporting to. This technician person will be reporting to the director. Director will be reporting to the CEO. So same is the case with the other side also. We have the finance manager. Under the finance manager, we have finance analyst. So people who are in that category of finance analyst would be categorized as that role. And there would be few people reporting to this finance manager, depending on the ABC organization, company size, company size. Now on paper, this role hierarchy looks cool. Technician engineer reports to tech manager, tech manager reports to director, director reports to CEO. Right from the right hand side, finance analyst would report to the finance manager, finance manager reports to director, director reports to CEO. On paper, it looks good. The organization structure of this ABC company on paper. Now, how can we convert that into Salesforce? So how can we do that by creating roles in Salesforce? The first thing that we need to do in order to set up our role hierarchy is to define the roles in the organization. So for the organization called ABC for which we are designing this application, let's define the roles in the system. The breakdown of the users and their roles. So let's see how they are been categorized. I have a profile column, I have a role column, I have the object level of access that we have, and we have the users reporting for a profile and a role. The first profile that I have is a technician profile. Now we have created a tech engineer as a role here. So under this role, who are the people who are reporting? We have Jack and Sam who will be working or who are basically a part of this role, which is nothing but a technician engineers. Now we have another role under the same profile, which is nothing but a technical manager. So under this role, technical manager, we have a tech manager as a user who is attached to that particular role. Now, in the finance profile, we have a finance analyst as a role. 
and the user that is connected to this profile called finance analyst is nothing but finance analyst. Last but not the least, we have a system administrator profile and the user that we have is SFPC admin, right? So as of now, not connect any role to the system administrator. In case if you want, you can go ahead and do it. Right? Let's see how exactly this role hierarchy is helping the other people to look at the extra records in the organization with the help of the table that we have. In the previous example, we have list of users and we have looked at how exactly the OWD is helping us. Now let's see if I enable the role hierarchy, but assuming that we have set up the role hierarchy, let's assume that for time being, we have set up this role hierarchy for the object called service request and we have already the OWD in place. So we will be seeing the effect of OWD plus role hierarchy. To go through the number of records that have been owned by the individual users, Jack has two, Sam has two, technician manager has one record, finance analyst has uh, zero records, system administrator owns one record with the help of the view and modifiable access, we have six records visible to the system administrator here. One record that he owns and five records are the records that is coming from the other people. Now let's see the impact of this role hierarchy enablement on this OWD. Let's collectively see how many records that they can see with the help of OWD setting and the role hierarchy. Now, from the previous diagram, we know that the tech manager sits at the top with the tech manager as a role. And we have two tech engineers who are reporting to this manager. Who are those? Technician Jack and Technician Sam. So now let's see how exactly it goes. Tech Jack has two records. Tech Sam has two records. Now, Manager owns one record from the OWD, the one record has been forwarded here. Since the role hierarchy is enabled, now this manager can see five records. So how? Two records from Jack, two records from Sam, and one records that he owns. So the total number of records that he can see is five. Right? So this is how your role hierarchy is basically helping us extend the record visibility to the top management so that they can see what exactly the work that is happening at the ground level. So this is how your role hierarchy has been helping us extend the access to the top level management. By enabling this role hierarchy, we have solved our second requirement also. Let's see this setup of this role hierarchy in our Salesforce R and see how exactly the different users would look at this information. I've logged in as system administrator here. Confirmation is on the screen as of DC admin. So that means it is a system administrator user. So what I'll do is I can see six records here. Now let's open our configuration for our grant access hierarchy. Let's see how we can enable the role hierarchy. So in order to enable our role hierarchy, the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up the roles. How can we set up the roles? In order to set up our roles in Salesforce, click on setup. In the quick find search for roles, so click on that roles link and you will be seeing the screen, click on setup roles. And that is where you will be seeing the entire hierarchy of our organization here. So how can you do that? Click on expand all to see the entire org hierarchy. In case if you want to collapse it all at once, you can click on collapse all. So if you remember, we have discussed this point that to the CEO director is reporting to the director. We have a finance manager who is reporting as well as a technical manager. So in case if you have a confusion, like how is this technical manager and the finance manager reporting the same to the director here, you can follow the dotted line here. That is where it conveys that these two people are reporting to the director here. Now, in case if you are still confused, you can basically click on that role that we have in place. And if you click on that link, it takes you to that role that we have in the system and it talks about to who this role is reporting to. So this is the label of our role and this role is reporting to the director here. And you can also see the same thing here in the top saying that technical manager is reporting to the director and director is reporting to the CEO here. The sibling for this one, that means a parallel branch that we have, which is reporting to the director is nothing but a finance manager. Now going back to the hierarchy that we have, so let's say we, we do not have a finance analyst created yet in the system. So let's see how we can do that. So as per our diagram, the finance analyst basically reports to the manager here. So if you see under the finance manager, there is a link which says add role. So in case if I want to add a new role, I'll click on that link, which basically 
specifies that where exactly this role is going into. I wanted to create this finance analyst, which is reporting to the finance manager. So that is why I'm selecting the this role reports to as finance manager. In case if I want to create a role which basically reports to a technical manager, I would go ahead and click on that link which says add role under that technician manager. So that way I can create a role which basically reports to that particular role that we have. If you see now, this finance analyst is reporting to the finance manager, finance manager is reporting to the director, director is reporting to the CEO here. So if I go back to the organization structure once again, these changes would be reflected there. Click on setup roles. If you see here, we have the structure. Now we have CEO, under CEO we have director, under director we have two roles, finance manager and the technical manager. To the finance manager, we have a sub role called finance analyst and to the technical manager, we have a tech engineer as a role. So this is the structure that we have discussed in our PPT. So just for your reference, I'll quickly go back to the PPT and we'll see how exactly that looks like. So we have CEO, director, tech manager, and finance manager as two siblings here. And to that, we have a tech engineer reporting to the tech manager. We have a finance analyst reporting to the finance manager. So this is how we were able to set up the role hierarchy. On the finance analyst, now what I wanted to do is I wanted to associate these roles to a user. What is the point of creating the roles and not assigning the people to it? So we have our role set up in our Salesforce. Now is the point where we need to tag these roles to the users. How we can do that? There are two ways to do it. So you can directly go to the user and set up that role. Or the other way to do it is go to that particular role and assign that role to the user. So I'm taking the second route here where I'm doing the process of assigning the roles to the user from the role hierarchy table. So I'll click on this finance analyst. So this is the role that we have created newly. So I wanted to assign users to it. How can I do that? If you see here, once that role is opened up, you have a button which says assign users to this role. So I'll click on it. And that is where the screen comes up, which talks about the list of users that are available. So what I can do is from this drop on, I can select all the users. And now I have all the users and I have a user which says finance analyst, which needs to be tagged to this role. So I'll simply select that user here, click on add. So that way I'm telling the Salesforce that this user should be tagged to this role that is, which is finance analyst. Once you are done with your configuration, you can go ahead and add multiple users at once and click on save. So now what happens is a user has been tagged to this role. If you see earlier, there were no users connected to it. Now we have a user connected to it. So how can we check this information? Either you can open the user from here just to uh, help you with the process of associating a user with the role, I'll go ahead and search for users. The first process that we have talked about. So I'll search for the users in the quick find, click on the users. I'll open the user that we have talked about, which is nothing but finance analyst. So this is the user that we have. And the role that is associated with this person is finance analyst. So in case if you want to edit a user, and associate that user with the role, you can click on edit. And from this drop down, you can change that role accordingly and right? click on save. Or this is how we can associate our users to a role. Now we have roles connected to the users also, right? I'll quickly show you the other users that we have in the system and the roles that they are connected to. If you see here, I've clicked on users and we'll quickly see the roles for it. As of now, system administrator doesn't have any role that is totally fine. So finance analyst, just now we have discussed that we have associated to the finance analyst as a role. Now the Jack technician is connected to a tech engineer role. Tech manager is connected to the technical manager role and technician Sam is connected to the tech engineer role. So now we have the people in the roles. We have the roles set up also. Now is the time where we need to enable the record access via role hierarchy. How we can do that? We have to go back to the same page that we have started with, which is nothing but sharing settings. In the quick find, click on setup in case if you're not on the setup page, search for sharing settings, click on that link. And that is where you'll be landing onto the same page where in which you have configured your OWD. Now the interesting and easier thing or a kind of a wow moment here is, so in order to enable record level sharing using the role hierarchy, all you need to do is just check this checkbox for the corresponding object under this column, which says grant access using hierarchy. 
if you enable the checkbox here automatically sharing of the records to the top management or people about the role current user role that we have that would be automatically done so let's see how we can do this one simply click on edit I want to enable the grant access using hierarchy for the service request object. If you see here, as of now, it is disabled. Right? You can simply check this checkbox and click on save. So point that we need to remember here is for the standard objects, by default, this checkbox would be checked. That means the record sharing using role hierarchies by default enabled for the standard objects. We have an option to enable or disable for the custom objects that we have. So remember, we have created our custom object, which is nothing but service request. Currently, the OWD is private, and we are enabling this role hierarchy using this checkbox. So before I go ahead and do this one, I would quickly like to show the current status of the manager, how many records that he owns, and then we'll take it forward. So currently, I'm logged in as my manager. So this is the manager. So currently, how many records that he has? He has only one record. So if I enable that role hierarchy as a system administrator, I'll be seeing the records owned by my technicians who are reporting to this manager. So I'm currently logged in as again my system administrator. So to enable this role hierarchy. So we have seen what exactly is the record count that the manager has currently has one. So I've enabled the role hierarchy here, grant access using a hierarchy checkbox and I'm clicking on save. So now what happens here is we have enabled the role hierarchy for this particular object called service request. So now we'll log in as manager and see if he sees any difference in the number of records that he sees. Now I'll refresh the screen. Currently I'm logged in as my manager. Earlier he has only one record that he owns, which is this one, SR004. Now if you see, the records that are being owned by the technicians are coming up for this manager. So these four records are coming in from grant access using role hierarchy. Right. So these are coming in from the hierarchy access. And the one record that he owns is coming from the OWD. This is how we can share the records that are being owned by the engineers with the managers or the people above the role hierarchy. So let's go back to our PPT and see what is the count that we have as per the PPT. At the end of the record level security, manager is able to see five records. Technician Sam is able to see two. Technician Jack is able to see two. And system administrator will be able to see six. And the last thing that we have not seen is what is the status of this finance analyst. Since there is no records that has been shared with this finance analyst, there would be zero records for him. Let's quickly check that as well. So if I refresh the screen, the number of records that are visible to this finance analyst is still zero. So I'm on the finance analyst user. So the number of records that are visible to this user is still zero. Right? At the end of the record level security, we have the status like this. System administrator would have six records till the entire discussion because he is the person who has all the records that are shared with him.